In 2024, the job market is changing. And if you're trying to break into data, you're gonna wanna have a clear strategy. If you don't, you might just get left behind. So today I'm breaking down exactly how I would become a data analyst in 2024 if I had to start from scratch. I'll be talking about, is data analytics still worth it? The skills you need, portfolio recommendations, and lastly, job hunt strategy. So let's dive in. So a lot of you watching this video might be brand new to the field of data analytics. Maybe you're hearing about it for the first time or you've been thinking about it for a while. Whichever pool you fall into, you might have had this question pop into your head at some point. Is data analytics a good career choice? If this is something you've been wondering about, then the short answer is yes, data analytics is still a great career choice in 2024. And before I explain and get into all the great aspects of why you should become a data analyst, I wanna go over uh, some of the hesitations. In 2023, we saw the rise and rapid acceleration of AI making its way into just about every industry. Unless you've been living under a complete rock, you've probably at this point heard about AI or chat GPT. So you've probably heard people running around like the world is ending saying, AI is gonna take our jobs. The robots, uh, the robots are gonna take all of our jobs. <laughs> I don't know why. And this includes data analytics. I mean, heck, even ChatGPT can do some data analysis now. It's kind of crazy. So it makes sense to be worried, right? Especially with all the tech layoffs we've been seeing the past couple of years. Though I will say that that's not really related to AI, but it just adds to the, the fear that some people have getting into tech-related jobs. And while AI is here to stay, I don't think it's as threatening as some people might make it out to be, especially for data analytics. Instead, what we're gonna see is a shifting of the landscape of AI into our everyday workflow. Those who know how to use it will continue to find jobs and use their skills, but those who don't know how to use it might be at a bit of a disadvantage. But in the current landscape now, I wouldn't say AI is yet a huge factor. Instead, it's more of a supplement than anything. But at the end of the day, without human input, the story that data can tell will begin to disappear. The human element really is critical to a lot of data analytics. And right now, AI is just another tool. And this is the way it's being viewed by leaders at Microsoft and OpenAI. It's just another tool. It's not being created to replace people, but rather to aid people. So here's some of the reasons why you should consider data analytics. The first is that you can break in without any formal technical experience. That was the case with me. I was a teacher, I had some time in sales, and then I became an operations leader. And that was the job I had for several years before breaking into tech. Another reason is the salary. The median salary in the US is about 75K. And in some cases, it could be as high as 120K depending on the job. Another thing to consider is that as the world grows, data grows with it. And with that, we're gonna need people to make sense of it all. Business leaders across the board have only expressed that they wanna grow their data teams. So because of this, the demand for data jobs will only begin to increase, which is again, another reason why now is as good a time as any to get into the field. More than ever, data analysts are crucial to helping businesses make smart decisions amidst all the confusion and help push the market forward. Yes. Data analytics is still 100% a great career choice, but you do need to be ready to adapt and pick up some additional skills. Speaking of skills, let's talk about what you're gonna wanna practice. But first, if you're finding this video helpful, smash that like and subscribe button for more content like this. Thank you so much. While there are tons of tools and skills out there to learn as a data analyst, there are really only three you need for an entry-level job. And the skills you should learn are Excel, SQL, and Tableau. These three alone will cover most of the entry-level data analyst jobs out there. And as long as you learn the basics, it's more than enough to land a job. And I'm gonna address the elephant in the room real quick. What about Python? I can tell you right now, there's people out there thinking I'm a fool for not adding Python to the list. They're saying, but Matt, what about the Python? You can't get a data job without the Python. But here's the thing. I talk to tons of people in the data space. I help people get data analyst jobs regularly. And what I've learned is that for most entry level 
data analyst jobs, Python just isn't necessary. I typically hear this, you should learn Python first talk coming from data scientists or people who've worked as consultants for a while and aren't really as in touch with what it's like to be an entry level data analyst. I've been in the field for a few years now. I've had a few different data jobs. I have friends who are making well above six figures, data analytics managers. I've never needed Python. They've never needed Python. Do some people I know use Python? Yeah, but typically not for entry level jobs. Don't approach Python until you've gotten a solid grasp on Excel, SQL, and Tableau. Also, did you notice that I recommended Tableau instead of Power BI? That was intentional. In fact, I work as a Power BI developer. I co-founded my own Power BI consultancy. I love Power BI, but I still think Tableau is better for most people just starting off. And no, it's not because it's more basic and beginner. The two tools are actually pretty on par with each other. The reason is because of the Tableau public platform. You can create a public profile. You can easily share your work, link it to your portfolio. We'll talk more about that later. It's just easier to share your work. Unfortunately, Power BI doesn't have anything like that. They need to jump on that. I actually made a full video comparing the pros and cons of Tableau and Power BI next to each other. So if you're interested in learning more, check that out in the description below. So to learn all these skills that I've mentioned, I recommend heading over to Udemy, Maven Analytics, or Coursera. These are my favorite platforms for learning data skills. You could take a few courses that are pretty inexpensive, and I strongly recommend that you take one course at a time. Avoid the temptation to dive into multiple courses at once. Focus on getting a general understanding of the tool. And here's a secret. You don't have to be an expert. Just learn the basics. This should really only take a few months if you're working at it consistently and creating projects along the way. Speaking of projects, let's talk about creating a portfolio. A portfolio is absolutely necessary in today's job market. This is especially true if you're transitioning into the field from a non-technical background like I did. It's basically like a cheat code. Without any experience at all, you can show off your abilities and demonstrate your skills showing why you're a perfect fit. And it also helps employers see the skills that you claim to have on your resume. I like to look at this step as being a bit intertwined with learning the skills because ideally you should be creating projects along the way. I recommend taking a course and then creating a project to help solidify those skills you learn. The more you put the skills to use, the better you're going to get. Overall, I would shoot for three to five projects on a landing page style portfolio. And I put together a step-by-step -step video on how to create a landing page style portfolio so when you're ready Ready for that step, check out the video in the description below. For your portfolio, I recommend having one Excel project, one SQL project, at least one Tableau project, and then one project that overlaps skills like SQL and Tableau together. This is just a suggestion, but again, as long as you have three to five on your portfolio page, you're good. The goal is to show an even representation of your full skill set. And these really do need to be your best projects. This is the highlight reel. For your project write-ups in your portfolio, make sure to include detailed write-ups, screenshots, and graphs, and really tell a story with the data. I like to say that a data analyst isn't someone that can just throw numbers and graphs together. You're not just trying to be a dashboard monkey. Instead, a data analyst is someone who can tell a story with the data and really inform businesses on how to make positive changes. With a portfolio created, let's talk about job hunt strategy next. Before we jump in, understand that getting the actual job can take longer than learning the skills themselves. It really is a case by case basis, but it is a competitive market. So it takes work and it takes time. And really it can take anywhere from a couple of months to a year. I've seen ranges all across the spectrum. And while it may seem hopeless at times, I want you to know that your opportunity could be right around the corner. So don't give up just when it gets hard. I highly recommend having a presence on LinkedIn. It's going to help you target jobs, but it's also gonna help you develop genuine connections. It's an all around win-win. I want you to look at LinkedIn as a funnel for job opportunities. Post about your projects, talk about what you're learning, share your struggles, take people along on the journey. 
One great thing about LinkedIn is you can connect with recruiters and develop relationships with them. But by getting involved in the data community, you're gonna develop a group of connections who are gonna act as a cheering squad. They could be peers, mentors, and they could help open up opportunities that wouldn't have been opened up to you otherwise. Since the very start of my data journey, I've been on LinkedIn. You would not believe how much I've benefited from having a presence on that platform. It's completely changed my life but it's helped me get farther in my career than I believe I would have gotten otherwise. If you're just starting out on LinkedIn, make sure your profile is completely optimized. And if you're looking for help optimizing your LinkedIn profile, I put together a video on how to maximize every section of your LinkedIn profile for data analyst jobs. So when you're ready, definitely check that out. When it comes to targeting open positions, try writing down a list of the exact jobs you want. Not just any random jobs you come across, but the jobs you really want. Focus more on getting in touch with recruiters and hiring managers or employees in the company rather than just submitting random applications. I've had a lot more luck through talking to people than I have from just submitting applications. The spray and pray method is tough and honestly it doesn't work very often for some people it works I mean when you submit that resume it's like entering the lottery so someone's got to win I guess but for the vast majority of people it's not super effective by having conversations with current employees or recruiters at the company you can open up backdoor opportunities and get referrals directly to the application page then when you apply they already recognize your name or you have that extra pull because you know somebody all right so to sum everything up you want to learn Excel, SQL, and Tableau. You want to build a portfolio of projects, and then you want to hop on LinkedIn and start creating connections and having conversations. Once you have all those things in place, then you can start to approach other skills like Python or Azure. You might not need those skills immediately, but they could help you out down the line. It's also beneficial to have an understanding of Power BI. And honestly, if you have a solid understanding of Tableau, Power BI is pretty easy to pick up a lot of those skills overlap. So that's my approach to becoming a data analyst in 2024 if I had to start from scratch. Hope this helps. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to support the channel and thanks again. Don't get stuck in course purgatory. Check out this video to see why online course certifications may not be as helpful as you think.